Coming up next on this episode of the Unlock You podcast. What are the tools? I'd give the first one, I'd say brave communication. You said it so well, we could, we react when our blood pressures goes up. We, we just, we're not in our best mode. What if we built a skill set of just bravely communicating? In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to say accurately what I'm feeling and needing, and I am going to learn how to listen back. And then we will go back and forth rather than accelerating this mania that goes mm -hmm. on this, this reactive thing that just escalates in marriage. Hey friends, thanks so much for joining us. This is Unlock You with Dr. Shannon Crawford. I'm a clinical psychologist, leadership consultant, and a really big fan of you getting to fulfill your life purpose. I want you to get unstuck and unlock your potential relationally, emotionally, spiritually, and vocationally. Thanks for joining us and let's get started. Hey guys, as you know, I just, I'm a big fan of Steven De Silva and Donna De Silva. And if you have the opportunity to interview someone you really respect, you're probably going to lasso them and make them do a second episode. So last week we talked about finances and some of those core beliefs that drive our unhealthy stuff with money. Um, and we need to be in relationship, letting people speak into those blind spots. We need to be recognizing where those core beliefs are undermining us. And we need to be finding out what is my identity and my purpose so that then I can pull and not push along that way. So if you didn't get a chance, go back, listen to Steven De Silva's first episode. And now we're jumping in today because post-production, we were laughing about a million things. And then it dawned on us at the same time, like we need to be talking about how a couple can do finances together well. It is such a major stressor and cited as one of the leading causes behind um, sex is another variable and raising of children parenting style. So this is one of those top three that's often cited as an issue for couples. And we want finances to not be a stumbling block in your relationship. So thank you, Stephen De Silva, for taking the time to jump back on and be our guest again. Well, my pleasure, Dr. Shannon. I'm always pleased to be asked for a second follow-up because that's a, <laughs> that's a really good, good sign, good right? Sign. Thank you. All right. So we have couples who are on the edge of their seat because they're about to strangle each other. How do I learn how to do finances with this other person that I used to be attracted to? But now every time we talk about money, I want to run screaming. So how do people do this? What are your thoughts? <laughs> what's going wow. on well I, I appreciate the chance to talk about that because i get that a lot in my office as we mm -hmm. work through situations right because money struggles are such a primary cause of problems in in, in marriage so i think i would open with this idea that it That's is funny. not hopeless it actually works you it, what what happens in a marriage that's on the same page is you gain synergy and synergy means it's greater the energy the effort the output the results the success is greater than the sum of the two individual parts mm -hmm. and this is this is what i would just want to in uh, encourage anyone listening if you are recognizing friction and struggle don't allow that to eclipse your hope again reach out for help and let's let's get you moving let's find find people that speak hope that believe this will work that that have some answers and don't be embarrassed or shamed or hide those all of those things will do nothing good in your life they will only grow you into yourself you know it's like deeper and deeper into a hole but i i promise you it does work i i've had so many um meetings where i have had people in fact i'm just remembering one the other day this couple i hadn't seen and I can't remember the time period, but I, I believe it was like six years, five or six years. And when I met them, the reason I met them is I hired the wife, I believe, and then later hired the husband as well. So at the time of this, uh, back in these days, I was a CFO. I was running an accounting department, and I hired these two young individuals, and I at the time didn't realize they were married, but they were. And, and here they are in my team. And I was just helping them along. I didn't realize, but I was mentoring them. Well, mm -hmm. it turns out at the time they were petrified with money and 
you know, just struggling in, in so many levels. And here they came back to me. They, they uh, were out of town. They said, I'm coming into town. Can we meet Stephen? They sat down in my room and they said, we want to thank you. They wrote me, <laughs> they wrote me a contribution to my nonprofit. They said, here's a gift for what you've done. And I look at the check. I'm like, uh, are you sure? Are you sure about that? And they go, yeah, we applied these rules. We got on the same page and we experienced synergy. And here we are now. And it was years later and they came back and it was so rewarding. And I just want to share that. That is, that's our hope. We get to do that. We get to have this breakthrough. So to talk about getting on the same page, I probably, uh, I'd probably start with a comment I made in my first interview, and that was on the idea that life is better pulled than pushed. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way most effectively I'm getting married couples on the same page in the area of money is to explain to them, we need to build a clear pull system for each of the partners, and then a third pull system for this combination team play that's called the family or the, the marriage, you know, it starts out as a marriage and it generally becomes a, a family and you've got education decisions to make and college investments to make and just all the complexities that come with time. So I really believe this. I believe that a marriage is uniquely able, it's uniquely capable of stretching around two powerful people and you get two healthy, powerful people when they are both clearly pulling mm -hmm. and then they come they synergize into a third pull system so that's the short answer P three pull systems one for the husband one for the wife one for the family where they synergize what are we going to do with our priorities mm -hmm. with our decisions our values how are we going to merge these and on purpose pull a family budget or a family financial plan especially get his book, uh, Money and the Prosperous Soul, because so many times it's tied to our core beliefs. So if I have a core belief that to love me is to buy me things, to love me is to respect me by cleaning the house, to love me is to um, save money and make sure we never go broke, to love me is to do a lavish vacation. Um, so we all have these internal scripts and rules on the inside. And if we don't address those and make those conscious, one, the other person is being held to a rule book that they may not even realize that they're in trouble and that you're getting this message constantly of being devalued and disrespected and not cherished because money is not money, wow. it's symbolic. And so what you're fighting about as a couple, it's usually not about this square or rectangle little piece of paper. It's actually about the significance and the meaning that we place on money. And so I love what he's saying about parse it into three segments. What does it my, money mean to me? What are my goals? What's my experience? What's yours? And then what does it look like for us to now create an us with intentionality and how we steward and how we move forward with the goals with finances? And when we start making those conscious, now I can start rejecting the belief that love equals this when really finances should be working for you as a couple and not this bartering of trying to show love and respect through money, because then it becomes this uh, empty abyss where I'm always having to use money in a symbolic way because there's something in your soul that's not receiving it when I say it with words or I do it with an expression that it always needs to be proved with finances. If that's the place, now you're constantly in a money hole because you're investing into something that there's no bottom to that. If you have somebody who continues to try to give you money and gifts and love, and yet you still feel unloved at the end of the day or disrespected or devalued, you know, it's not actually about that rectangle. You know, it's actually about a core belief. So I love what he's saying. This is so practical of getting the three quadrants of saying, okay, what is this for each of us? And now let's make it plain. Let's process what's our money personality. What's our temperament with money? What's our family of origin and how we practice that? And then what do we intentionally want to put our heads together and create as our culture, as a family or a married couple, a unit, and how we're going to steward money together? I love that point. Yeah, that's so good, Dr. 
Dr. Shannon. That's amazing. The um, first, my first interview, I talked about how our skills will cripple and hide under down to the level of our uh, our belief system. And so that's a very important exercise, like you're saying, is doing it out loud, healing our belief system and growing our beliefs so that we can take advantage of our training. But when you have a couple, you just, you just multiply that complexity. Mm -hmm. So having the ability, uh, you know, with a, a teacher or a coach or a mentor, whatever fits best, a counselor, an advisor, someone that a couple can come to that can help them um, kind of clarify and articulate this, what feels like an impossible, you know, spaghetti mess, it really is not that complicated. And if with someone who has that gifting, they can really straighten out the spaghettis <laughs> and kind of make it back into a waffle. So, oh, this does make sense. I see uh -huh. this, you know, and once we get that, um, it's easy to get a couple on the same page because now they're both pulling in the same direction uh, with the same set of values and the same clarity and understanding. Mm -hmm. And they are bringing along that toolbox that says we know what to do when we trigger. We know that if we react off each other again, and it, it, always, it always happens. Um, we never, comp I, I, I I've grown to think of life, at least with money, and the maturing process as a spiral staircase. And at the bottom of the staircase is where we're you know, we, we are wrestling with all these problems and we, we slowly heal and kind of gain maturity at a level. But I think that sometimes we see these problems come back to us later in life. Uh, and it's usually because we're at a higher level mm -hmm. and the pressure is greater. So I, I do think we master things at lower levels. Imagine these are multiple floors of our life. And at the lower floors, we do master them. And if you revisit them later, it's not because you are failed or fail or false. It's because, wow, the pressure is a lot greater mm -hmm. at the 50th floor than it was at the third floor. Mm -hmm. So dealing with bringing your, your toolbox with you up the staircase as a couple is really important because you can use that toolkit over and over and over. And guess what? It will grow us from the fifth floor to the 50th floor to the you know, 150th floor, it, it does work. Yes, absolutely. Having those skills and not feeling like there's a lot of couples I work with that there's like this belief that we shouldn't have to have this conversation. It shouldn't have to be this hard. We should just, if we love each mm -hmm. other, if you love me, you should just know this about me by now. There are some things statistically that will just never change. You will just wow. always be different people. That's not based on opinion. That's actual verified research that the most happy, delightful couples will still have. The fundamental differences will always be there. And it's the meaning that we ascribe. So once I make an attribution that you're spending that money because you don't respect how hard I work, you're doing that ah. because you don't actually love me. You love That's your brilliant. work more than you love me, or you love yourself and your wow. cars and your whatever out there versus actually cherishing me. Once we ascribe meaning, now our tools are in the background and I can go, yeah, but I know he's just doing that because blah, blah, blah. I know she's just saying that or doing that because once you fill in that gap, that's mind reading. And mind reading is really toxic because you're not actually relating to the person in the present. You're relating to the projection of what you've created, which usually is state dependent on the current emotion you're feeling. So at some moments, you know, right after connecting and having this euphoric moment, you could be like, you're so great. How could I ever be mad at you? And then when you're emotional and you're upset and you're looking at the bank account and the deficit and where did that money go? And now all of a sudden, dependent on emotion, this other projection you've created based on judgment, you're ascribing meaning of who that person is. And all of this uh, internal world is getting played out where we start projecting our family of origin or other people we felt that weren't there for us and didn't meet our emotional needs and care and respect and all of these things and past relationships really start to filter and muddy the water of the present relationship.
So he's giving us really good tools that we need three different quadrants. We need to build those skills. We need to stay hopeful and we need to start recognizing what mind reading am I doing? Because that hinders my ability to apply the tool when I need to, because the tools in my prefrontal, while the emotional brain back here in the limbic system is holding the judgments and the emotion and the intensity of why you're doing that. And when I'm in that place, there's no winning for the other person, because if they say the right thing, well, you're just saying that because I just told you you're supposed to, you know, instead of believing the best and hoping the best and changing some of those core judgments that we've made about each other. And now you start to believe the best and you can actually draw people up into a healthier identity, a healthier dynamic gets played out between you. Instead of it being about that rectangle of paper, now it's about investing in one another as people. And then again, to his point, now money works for you instead of money being an exchange of trying to barter love or a symbolic way of feeling respected or cared about. Oh my gosh, you're so smart. That's amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. Team. Oh my word. I'm so glad I recorded that. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't wait to listen to this podcast. <laughs> no, that was really, that was really brilliant. That was, um, yeah, you know, we, we, I think we do all carry a toolkit. As you were talking, I was thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, we I think of the toolkit as the good tools I carry up my staircase in my marriage and in my business and whatnot. Yeah. But as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've always had a toolkit, but some of the tools I had in there were terrible. Manipulation, intimidation, <laughs> <laughs> hiding, you know, just <laughs> denial. Oh, um, and yeah, yeah. And we all have these tools and we know better, but they really seem to work or that's all we know. So maybe, maybe my encouragement for anyone listening is you do have a toolkit. You might find some of those tools really are not helpful tools. So what if you found out there is a better tool and you don't have to lose it, but you get to exchange it. You know, here, you, you have a toolkit. We need full toolkits. Well, what if you took that, that, um, that painful one, that poison maker, that, that toxic one and gave it away? We just give it away right now and we receive the good one to be, so that your toolbox is safe and full. Yeah. And, and the ideas that Dr. Shannon is sharing, that's amazing. The ideas I've given you, I, I just release those into your toolbox. I don't know if I have that authority, but yeah. just, I just want that in your toolbox. And so receive that new tool. Those, these ideas, there's been several given here. Let those tools land in your toolbox and exchange them for those bad ones. And we just let those bad ones go and um, feel the weight of that new toolbox. It's, it's stout, it's strong. This is gonna work. That's so good, that's so good. Because if at the end of the day, if I win an argument with manipulation or with stonewalling yeah. and withdrawing, I've used the tool, I feel powerful, I feel safe and protected because you didn't get to hurt me and take advantage of me. But the cost, the cost wow. is intimacy. The cost is connection. And going back to Dr. Ripley's episode on marriage, now I'm the porcupine and I'm stabbing the very person I'm wanting to nurture and care or respect and honor me. It doesn't work that way. So if we could slow down and not talk about money when we're already emotional, try to pause based on research, Gottman's research, that if your blood pressure goes up to a certain point, literally you will not say good, rational, healthy things. You will be in fight or flight freeze. You will panic. You will say all these toxic things. You won't be able to take your thoughts captive. You won't be able to direct your words into life and edification. You will slaughter that other person, or you will look at them like they are dead and mean nothing to you, which hits all their abandonment, fear, and adequacy issues. So if we do that, know that there's a cost. But to his point, we can exchange what tools we're using when we talk about finances. There's a moment where there's this split second where you get to decide, do I continue on to pick up this tool that was modeled 
Maybe I've seen it in my family or in past relationships, or it was used on me. And, you know, our defense mechanisms won't let me see that I'm now the person doing it to someone else. But trust me, that's how modeling works. There's a part of you that also does it to someone else, even if it's hard to admit. And so I can choose that tool. I can continue to bow up and yell and throw things or threaten things, or I can continue to say, oh, nothing, and just avoid and distance or do chores while the other person is trying to talk to you. You can do that. Or he's inviting us to say, there's a new tool. There's something else you could lean into. And let's unpack that for a second. What are those new tools that we could be applying to have healthy souls as we talk about finances? Wow. I, that's that's um, so inspiring to think. What are the tools? I'd give the first one. I think I'd, I'd say brave communication. Mm-hmm. I think you, you said it so well. We, could, we react when our blood pressures goes up. We, we just were not in our best mode. What if we built a skill set of just bravely communicating? In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say accurately what I'm feeling and needing, and I am going to learn how to listen back, and then we will go back and forth rather than accelerating this man- mania that goes mm-hmm. on, this, this, um, this reactive thing that just escalates in marriage. And I, I've been married a long time, so I know, I know how this works. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'd say brave communication. I think clear truth. I think truth comes in two versions. I think there's a uh, a small T and a large T. I think yeah. the small T is is kind of a uh, in, environmental truth or a experiential truth, um, cultural truth. But sometimes those are not eternal. They're not accurate. They're not they're not buildable. They don't have capacity. And so big T, big truth. You, you want to have a way to gather big truth. This all applies to the financial space, by the way. There's so much misinformation about money, about retirement, about income needs, about uh, what is valuable. It's, it's really, really confusing out there in the world of information. Yeah. So I would say that there is clear, true information. You have to learn how to find it. And if no one knows, go back. We just, I just got to beat that horse again. Go find some wise teacher, counselor, advisor, coach, mentor, someone who, who has the ability to speak truth to you and some source that's greater than themselves. And what you'll find is, oh, wow, there actually is real principles. Yeah. And rather than kill your audience with my <laughs> practical uh, you know, going to the financial space of an accountant that I would go, and then everyone would go into a coma. So I'll stop there with those two, <laughs> those two tools. I well, just I have my pen and paper. I'm ready for it. But <laughs> um, I love what you're sharing. So if we put all this together, I love how we didn't necessarily have a plan going into this, but it all goes full circle. Because when we're little and we have that rule book and I'm thinking money means this. And if you do this with money, now that tells me something that gives me information. So that's that two separate mine and yours. So if we could go back and look at how did my family model dealing with conflict, finances, um, heated topics, if at all, was it modeled? Did I have a script for that? Um, Did people just kind of drift apart and become household roommates? All of that was creating a script where a part of me will replicate that. And another part of me has vowed, I will never do that. And so we overcompensate, both of which are now in a tug of war, depending on which side of me is stronger in the moment. And so we can keep whack a mole our unhealthy stuff instead of what he's saying is, let's go back. Let's do that quadrant. Let's take personal responsibility. What was modeled in my home? How did we do finances? Was that like the splurge thing? You had money and you burn a hole through it. And that means something. And we got the last ice cream. Or was it we hoard for the apocalypse and you never know what's going to happen? Or we're so all over the map that sometimes we're spending and sometimes we're in the broke house and we don't know like a stable place to where we land. Look at that for yourself as a couple. And then um, I love Les and Leslie Parrott. I did my dissertation on marriage mentoring. 
and doing any of that work where you can get mentors to speak into your life, to give you practical examples. Because for many of us, if we didn't have an example of how do we talk about money? How do we budget in a way that's not toxic and controlling? Like you better not spend money or how dare you not let me spend money? These fights are are etched inside of us. And if we don't have another example, another tool belt to look at and say, oh my gosh, that's what healthy conversation about money looks like. That's what healthy conflict looks like. And for many of us, we're trying to not fight. Our goal is if we can just be peaceful, then that means we're in love and there's no threat, no danger. And we're going to just, you know, grow old together. The research is actually does not support that. Some level of disagreeing is actually healthy because it means both people are authentically coming to the relationship versus passivity of just kind of waiting for that thing to just blow over, putting it under the rug. So his brave communication is, is challenging, right? Like it challenges everything inside of me that wants to run away and avoid conflict. One, we tend to take it, take it, take it, and then explode. And we just vomit over the other person, all these terrible things we should never, ever say. And we probably don't even mean, but in an emotional state, when I'm not taking my thoughts captive, I'm going to say a bunch of junk so I can do that. Or people will just keep it, keep it, keep it inside, or they'll nag and nitpick and they'll make passive comments or jokes that the other person knows it's not a joke and it gets real old after a while. All of those tools are undermining the connection and we're not able to stay in a prosperous soul personally, much less in that third quadrant of us as a couple and as a family. So we need to have examples. We need people outside of us to say, hey, this is how we conflict. This is how we communicate. This is how we navigate financial space conversations in that you're now creating a new template that you can practice. And the last thing that I'll say is it's really important to give yourself and your partner permission to learn. So many times people will leave a good therapy session or coaching or modeling or mentoring. And their biggest fight will happen right after that appointment because the other person doesn't perfectly do it now that they know. So there's ammunition of you knew better, but now I know have evidence that you're choosing not to do better. Like now I know for sure that you actually don't respect me. Instead of going, hey, we got to toggle through this. We're going to have to learn and both kind of like fumble and muddle through. And we can gently coach and remind rather than shame and criticize or withdraw. Those are the toxic tools that we grew up with. Most of us grew up with some of those strategies and we're applying it without realizing we have a bias that I should be able to have time to learn the exercise. But the other person, they should do it right away. Otherwise, I know that they don't love me and they're not even putting in the work. So we're not even going to our next appointment because if you're not going to do your side, then obviously we're wasting our time and money to go. That is such a self-defeating because nothing is learned quickly or easily. And Stephen is walking us through, and I believe he even has groups that you could meet with him, have a hourly coaching and be a part of a community and start navigating this to deal with what is healthy finances look like? What does it look like to go to a marriage therapist when your marriage is not about to divorce? Do you know how many people come to my office and a thousand other therapists and they're like, well, we're either getting divorced today or you're going to save our marriage. Why do people wait until the very last minute instead of proactively investing in that middle quadrant of saying, hey, let's be proactive. Let's lean in and engage and create a new normal of how we want to do that and then create the scaffolding where it's, it's okay for us to fail and to gently prompt and remind one another instead of constantly criticizing and undermining the process because we have to learn, we have to fail along the way. So Stephen, what you have shared is so valuable. We are really, really grateful. Thank you. It's such a delight to uh, share my ideas and then hear your perspective back. It's amazing. You've, you've got such a deep um, context. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, is there any last comments that you would give our friends in the Unlock You community on how to do coupling around finances well? Mm-hmm. 
Well, I um, I would say there is a um, a community you can jump into. It's uh, you mentioned it there at the end, so I'll just throw it out there. If yeah. they go to my website, up on the top on the right hand edge is a group is a thing called community. If they click on that, they can go in, and this is a way where they can show up with their open. It's an open forum. Mm -hmm. I spend an hour with this group every week on Wednesdays, and whatever whatever questions are on. Uh, that's what I do is we just we just bounce back and forth. And there's a lot of fun in that group. Uh, it's a Zoom. It's a video call. So, you know, if you, if you want to oh, hide, you can. If you want to show up, you can. Yeah. Um, that's a place for people to go if they just want to hear, you know, it, just to access. Well, what's a community like that talks about this kind of stuff? <laughs> that would be a place I'd point them. Awesome. And what's your website for those that are listening? S StephenKDSilva.com. All right, perfect. And for those yeah. who are on YouTube, we'll have all those links and wonderful assistant person does all the things. So we love you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you for leaning in, being healthy, getting unlocked so that you can be the best version for yourself and for the world around you. Bye guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Unlock You. It is our dream to invest in you. And one of the ways you can do that is by getting more of the bonus material, the content, and to know about future events. Head to the website, drshannoncrawford.com, subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll be the first to know what we're rolling out. And we want you to truly get unlocked so that you can thrive, not only for yourself, but also for the greater calling on your life. Let's link arms and do it together. See you in the next episode.